Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, so, this is exciting. Um, I've got MIA to talk about blockchain. It's kind of um, a first for me to be talking to a singer, rapper, art. How would you like, how should we talk about you? Are you an artist? Are you a Many things. Just a That's, It would have helped to screen the trailer because that explains a lot. And yes. I don't have to say it all. But um, yeah, just many things. Still yeah. in the making, I suppose. Yeah. Which yeah. is why I'm here. Exactly. So, yeah, I guess the, the first obvious question is like, how, how did you kind of come across blockchain? How are you here at a, like, we were just talking about, like, in the panel. I, I was, was just... invited by Vinay, who I'd like to thank for inviting me. Um, yes, just, Vinay Gupta. Yes. And uh, just as an artist, um, I've just released this documentary, yeah. which um, <clears throat> was made uh, by a friend, and it's a bit of an in interesting situation because we won the Sundance, um, in January, we won Sundance, but it's taken, it just hit the cinemas now in October. And mm -hmm. um, it's taken quite long for that process. Mm -hmm. And so that got me into thinking about, you know, new platforms to distribute on because mm -hmm. we felt that going through normal avenues like Netflix or putting it on I iTunes um, is, is good, but mm -hmm. maybe wasn't enough because it brought so many different worlds and ideas together in one mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's when I first started thinking into, you know, thinking about building some other way where you can, you know, put out political films without having to suit the agenda of the distributors because, you know, I felt that, that that's what is so obvious these days, mm -hmm. that once you try to have political work released, you often have to side with the elite yeah. or with the establishment, and mm -hmm. otherwise you get buried. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's not really about, um, you know, my, my presence here is not really about how uh, artists become more, um, you know, uh, empowered in the monetary situation of the mm -hmm. industry and how music is distributed and how they get that money mm -hmm. uh, from it not having a middleman. Mm -hmm. But really it's about a necessity, building mm -hmm. a space where creativity can, can be what it is without having to fit a framework of the agenda, you know. Okay, cool. So, because Imogen Heap, she's a musician who's talked a bit about the blockchain. And she accepted Ethereum famously for like one of her songs. And I think for her, blockchain in the music industry is about, you know, rights and about like obviously every song um, has a huge number of people who kind of need to get paid. Um, and I think her idea was that there were too many middlemen um, and that somehow by using a blockchain you could like decentralize that and get the money to the artist. But are you saying that it's less about money? No, I think those things are important mm -hmm. and it's a, a bonus when that happens mm. like obviously I think Vinay invited me here to focus on that to say you know wouldn't it be great when artists get all the money and um, <clears throat> and I think that is great but it's a uh, it's you're gonna have more musicians and artists fight for that and um, you know that's like the obvious one and the first point you stop at. Mm. But for me, I feel like what's important just in terms of um, where we're at in the world and how you know, things have gone, it's really about um, having the freedom and a space to be creative and mm -hmm. express yourself without, um, um, you know, without sort of, we were talking about this, without sort of having to, conform yeah. and fit into the mainstream. And we, you know, I feel like the music industry is, is affected in lots of ways, like, you know, less, which is why I think the 
documentary was important to show yeah. is we have less kids coming from the streets now that become musicians mm -hmm. or you know enter into universities and get mm -hmm. opportunities and then you know enter the the established industry mm -hmm. it's very difficult you know so is blockchain like a kind of is the new technology that's coming through is it like an opportunity to make that uh, to I make mean, that more no, possible uh, yes i mean that's the conversation we're having is yeah. is it going to do that yeah. because if it's not going to do that and if it's going to mimic the industry that's already yeah. established which is now so tied up that yeah. it's very difficult for people who are outside of that or for people who have political opinions to break through you mm -hmm. know and and i feel like you know, you saw like during the elections in America with Trump and Hillary, mm -hmm. like 99% of the music industry supported Hillary mm -hmm. and they had to and they, and they, you know, that was like openly done. Mm -hmm. And, and I, you know, and it's maybe the same in Britain or whatever, but what I'm saying is the, 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 the connection between pol politicians or politics and music is so close now, mm -hmm. or the music industry, um, that in terms of a global space, mm -hmm. somebody from India, can they become a pop star in America, mm -hmm. you know? And I had this conversation two years ago in the Evening Standard and got blackballed and completely canceled is the term on the internet because yeah. I said that, you know, mm -hmm. when I pointed out actually if American artists are going to be the elite artists mm -hmm. who have a billion followers, then they have the right to talk about or represent issues that are going on around the world. And, you know, American artists felt that that was not true mm -hmm. and that, that it's not their problem to discuss that. So do you feel... And do you feel like there's kind of not, there's not really a space for like Yeah, I mean, I think to me that Is was that... the end of the industry because right. it was like, okay, so you have elitism in the music industry where mm -hmm. only five artists are big, you know, mm -hmm. that they become billionaires. Yeah. And then, but they don't want to speak about stuff that's going on in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And then America, who is the number one distribution space, uh, whether it's Apple or Tidal or whatever the thing is, um, it's the number one distribution center, you know, the hub. Mm -hmm. And if they feel um, that, you know, somebody in Syria has to come to talk about Syria, and so this Syrian girl has to become a pop star in America in order to talk about Syrian problems because they've invented those social structures and lanes and terms that we have, the rest of the world kind of on social media um, abides by, mm -hmm. if, they're, if they're creating those rules and they also own the platform and then they also tell you what you should talk about and not talk about, yeah. then I think that's dangerous because it leaves out 95% of the world. Mm -hmm. So we've had a massive and, like centralization of power basically. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's weird that I'm saying it, you're right, because I was, I, I did get let in and I became a pop star in America and, but the, the whole documentary is about how you are trying to talk about something that happened in your mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. and it was impossible. And yeah, so I think, you know, if, if blockchain is gonna do something to the music industry, uh, then that would have to feature into it, mm -hmm. you know, like a, a diplomatic space mm -hmm. and, um, equality for different artists to, to, you know, come up depending on, like not dependent on who owns the platform yeah. and who's owning the distribution. Do you think that the internet has overall been a positive thing? Like, because obviously you came out in like the early noughties when like some of these like social media platforms weren't even there or like they were just starting and then you kind of, um, but, you know, had to like, I guess, adjust to that in some ways and like put yourself on MySpace, etc. And that was a really like, in some ways that gave a possibility from people to people from Syria or from Sri Lanka or from anywhere in the world, you know, in, pr in theory, to like put themselves out there. But do you think ultimately it's led to just actually more power concentration and like actually that's Well, the internet has changed. And, um, you know, I, I don't know if I should say this, but 
if Julian Assange was here, a lot of problems in this room would be solved because he's one of the smartest men, uh, you know, alive on this topic. But um, yeah, the in internet changed hands, but but it, during 2010, that 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 is the battle I had. That you know, in 2005, when I first put the record out. Um, uh, all the shops came to the record label and said, we don't know where to stock this girl because her genre is so mashed up, you yeah. know. She doesn't belong in the shops because where do you put it? Do you put it in the world music section or electronic section or hip hop section? She doesn't fit the mold. And so they said, we're just not gonna sell the record. Mm. And so during that year, um, Napster happened mm -hmm. and LimeWire. So a million people downloaded the album. So, you know, I had, I had become the first, um, you know, internet pop star because, you know, that year I went to, even though I think I sold about 25 records in England, when I went to Coachella, I had to do three encores, you know, wow. because I was, like, huge. Yeah, yeah. And, and that happened because of the internet, so obviously I fell in love with it. And, you know, I was the first, one of the first people to push the, the crazy MySpace world of whatever, and, you know, um, sort of embraced whatever the thing was in the beginning, YouTube, whatever. So when it came to 210 and net neutrality and what was happening, and obviously there was the end of the Sri Lankan war, and I'm a Sri Lankan Tamil, and uh, a lot of that played out on the internet. And seeing how um, it was no longer a, a democratic space, Force and also, also a liberal space, mm -hmm. uh, then I started think, to think twice about it. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I just feel like since then, it's only gotten worse. Mm -hmm. and, and I get it, you know, when, whenever creatives um, and people with good intentions invent something, it often, you know, gets taken over. And this is the point you're making, like, wouldn't blockchain become, mm. become the monster? Like the know, internet, is, you know, just yeah. kind of starts with this idea. And we've seen it already, you know, like, pe things like this, this decentralization idea, and then kind of people creating all these other yeah. power structures. Yeah, I think that's good and bad in everything. You know, it's sort of like a 50-50 thing, because ultimately you're talking about machines and you can switch it off, you yeah. know, and with music, you, you can always go back to strumming a guitar and, you know, doing live shows and get back into the streets and that industry, it can, it can evolve, you know, or go back to basics yeah. and people will always find ways to access it. But I think, yeah, the idea is, is to, what we were saying is to, incentivize the artists mm -hmm. because we, we, you know, I, I believe the creativity standard is, is there's something interesting happening with it and that's because of the nature of the internet and how things are sold or listened to mm. and it's dictating creativity whereas before creativity dictated the tool but now the tool dictates creativity and pretty soon if you have the tool being that great, they could just bosh out Mozart and, you know, give you perfection, then what's the point of having artists, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so that, that's like the conversation that we were having in mm. terms of like, what is the future of an artist? And I think this is where blockchain comes in mm -hmm. because as machines strive for perfection, um, and to sing more like humans and, you know, all the algorithms are putting in all their favorite songs and boshing out another favorite song that sounds like they're all their favorite songs, yeah. um, which is kind of happening now. Um, you would need more and more people like old school artists that are in it for the right reasons and that are, you know, uh, that have individual and unique perspectives about the world and the times we live in, mm -hmm. which is very human. Yeah. And I think that's why blockchain could be useful, 
is mm -hmm. if those people can stay in their environment and still get paid and access their fans and, you know, without having to go through the sausage machine of the industry so they come out exactly like all the rest of the perfect pop stars, you know. Yeah. So, like, for me, that would have been useful. So it sounds have. like you've got, like, a kind of mixed like feeling about technology because yeah. you kind of you've always kind of embraced it but then you've also worked a lot with like analog and so yeah and you're kind of saying that um yeah so like an ai machine can like probably eventually we're already seeing like you know massive use of like um people like changing the way their voices sound and like people use you know there's so much it's kind of so easy to make music anyone who has like garage band on their phone can make a like decent sounding track because there's so much technology to make music sound kind of decent and so we have this kind of per per perfection but actually as you say like that's not artistry and i guess maybe now i think there is potentially a backlash um, against that kind of perfection and as you say like people can always pick up a guitar and I think we're seeing now like vinyl sales go up we're seeing like a new um, uh, apparently like cassette tapes are coming back someone told me recently because people are into like that sound or whatever so in some ways so blockchain is an interesting one because someone was talking earlier about blockchain as part of like the fourth industrial revolution and AI being part of that as well so those being hand in hand but you're kind of talking about it in a bit of a different way so like AI being a little bit of a, something that you maybe, not that you're necessarily against, but in this context, um, that kind of idea of making something more perfect than a human can. But isn't, so, isn't, isn't well, some I just, we do live in a time where everybody on Instagram wants to look like a CGI kind yeah. of, you know, thing. And yeah, you're right, you could generate a song, you know, yeah. uh, and in two seconds and be a DJ. Yeah. That, gets paid tons of money to get, yeah. you don't even have to, you know, you could just literally, you don't even have to have music when you tour now, no, you know, no, yeah. and you, it, it just feels like, yeah, I think, you know, maybe that then becomes, a, there's some sort of happy medium where I think, you know, I still use cassette tapes when I record songs, mm -hmm. so, yeah, there, there's got to be, uh, I think when it gets super techni technical and technological, mm -hmm. then there will be a pull towards something more organic mm -hmm. and analog mm -hmm. and human. Yeah. yeah. That was great. Okay. <laughs> cool. I think, we're, I think our time is up, so. Cool, thanks for having Everyone me. Everyone should go and see that documentary. I'm going to. Go see the film. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Thank you.